खुद शुरू करते हैं ओके सर चलो चलो ठीक है यार यार दरअसल आज ज्यादा पढ़ाई लिखाई की बात नहीं करेंगे मतलब आज हम लोग सिर्फ ऑडियो विजुअल सुनेंगे देखेंगे <laughs> कुछ शेयर कर रहे हैं क्लिप्स हाँ यूट्यूब से हमने निकाला है yeah. उसको ही देखो और उसी पे okay. ये काउ के बारे में दिखाए हैं ठीक है कैसे कैसे क्या करती है छोटा छोटा क्लिप है about the different ways in which animals eat their food a cow is an herbivore it eats plants do you know how a cow eats और नेट स्लो लग रहा है मेरा यस नेट स्लो इधर भी वो वीडियो जब ऑन कर दे रहे हैं तो मुझे आवाज भी नहीं आ पा रहा है इट्स प्लांट्स लो कोई नहीं स्टूडेंट्स अ काउ हैज अ सेट ऑफ शार्प टीथ इन फ्रंट ऑफ इट्स लोअर जॉ व्हाइल ईटिंग प्लांट्स it quickly bites them with its sharp teeth the cow takes small bites at a time it is called nibbling so a cow first nibbles its food with the help of its sharp front teeth and swallows it you all first chew your food well and then swallow it don't you but a cow swallows its food directly without chewing students you have only one compartment in your stomachs but the stomach of a cow has four compartments among these four compartments the first compartment is the largest all the unchewed grass gets collected in this first chamber a cow may also swallow unnecessary things like iron nails small pieces of wire or even stones when it swallows grasses these things also get collected in the first chamber of the stomach later while the cow is taking rest it brings the swallowed food back to its mouth along with the unnecessary things like iron nails wires and stones in this process the food along with the iron nails wires and stones from the first chamber enter the second chamber before reaching the mouth unnecessary things like iron nails wires 
and stones are heavier than grasses. So, they get collected in the second chamber. Only the grass reach the mouth. The swallowed grass brought back to the mouth is called cud. The cow chews the cud properly with the help of its strong flat teeth at the back of its mouth. That is called chewing of cud. The cow then swallows the chewed cud. The chewed cud passes through the third chamber and reaches the fourth chamber of the stomach. The fourth chamber of the stomach of a cow is like human stomach. Cow gets necessary nutrients from the food from the fourth chamber of the stomach. Animals that chew the cud are called cud chewing animals. Not only cow, herbivores like the buffalo, the horse, the goat, the sheep, the deer and the giraffe also first swallow the food without chewing them. Later, they bring the swallowed food back to their mouth and chew the cud well and then again swallow it. So, herbivores like a buffalo, a horse, a goat, a sheep, a deer and a giraffe are all cud chewing animals. ठीक है ये तो तुम्हारा पहला था बिल्कुल यस सर इसी टाइप का कुछ कुछ और है जिसको कि हम लोग कंटिन्यू करते हैं ओके छोटा 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 क्लिप है जिसको छोटी करेंगे तो थोड़ा सा ज्यादा मेरे समझ से इनिशिएटिव्स रहेगा ये जो तुम्हारा बेसिक है ये रुमिनेशन कैसे करता है क्या करता है ना छोटा सा क्लिप है दो मिनट का Crushed food is mixed with symbiotic microorganisms that break down cellulose and other organic compounds into simple sugars. These in turn are transformed into organic acids such as acetic acid and butyric acid and gases such as carbon dioxide and methane. Gases escape through the esophagus and the mouth, belching, while organic acids are absorbed into the blood and used by the cells of the organism as energy. and structural materials the rumen bacteria also bind inorganic nitrogen and incorporate it into their own proteins these bacteria also synthesize b complex vitamins apart from bacteria the rumen is also inhabited by ciliates some of them break down cellulose while others feed on the rumen bacteria the cud fermented by microorganisms is moved to the second chamber the reticulum where it is further grinded and formed into balls these are regurgitated by antiperistalsis into the mouth to be chewed again thoroughly chewed and swallowed again the digester is passed by peristalsis to the third chamber the omasum where water is absorbed and the digester condensed from the omasum the condensed digester passes to the abomasum the final chamber of the stomach The abomasum, which is the proper stomach, secretes enzymes to initiate the digestion of proteins released from plant cells, and also proteins of bacteria and ciliates found in the rumen. 
From the abomasum, the food pulp passes to the duodenum and then to the small intestine, in which the digestion is completed and absorbed. Ingested food enters the large intestine, where water is absorbed and feces formed. These are later eliminated from the body through the rectum. Like वैसे ही तीसरा है ये भी डाइजेस्टिव फिजियोलॉजी से रिगार्डिंग है ठीक है ये पूरी की पूरी फिजियोलॉजी है तुम्हारी ये थोड़ी बड़ी है Hi, I'm Mike Hutchins, extension dairy specialist at the University of Illinois. This module will discuss the basics of the digestive physiology of ruminants. Let's first look at the different compartments of the ruminant stomach. Remember, there's only one stomach with four compartments. The first major structure is the rumen. In the adult dairy cow, about 57% of the volume is found in this portion, also called the fermentation vat, the common name. In a calf, however, it only makes up about 30% of the volume. You'll see why this changes a bit later. This course is the major structure also that will bloat if there's abnormal fermentation going on in the rumen. The second compartment would be the reticulum. It makes up about 7% of the cow's total volume, also called the honeycomb area, and makes up about 8% in the calf. Another common name for this one would be called the hardware area or the hardware trap because this is where wire and pieces of metal would be caught and also where a magnet would be found if given to a cow to retain long, sharp material. The third compartment is the omasum. It makes up about 24% of the cow's volume. The common name called the many plies looks a little bit like a phone book to be exact and makes up about 13% of the volume for a baby calf at birth. Not many things can go wrong with the omasum except for compaction due to such things as very fibrous materials such as sunflower hulls or large amounts of mineral being consumed. The fourth compartment is called the abomasum. It makes up about 11% of the cow's total rumen structure and is also called the true stomach. Here's where the first secretory tissue will be found. You'll find some enzymes to digest protein. In the baby calf, it makes up about 49% or almost half of the whole volume. Thus, the baby calf is a bit like a monogastric unlike the ruminant itself. Probably the most common disorder you and I will hear about with the abomasum would be the displaced abomasum or twisted stomach, which means this stomach leaves the bottom right side of the cow and pops up 90% of the time on the left side towards the dorsal or the top part of the cow. Now let's go back to the baby calf. How does this calf's small immature rumen develop? Basically, it is caused by stimulation of the rumen papillae, primarily by feeding it grain. This grain will produce propionic and butyric acid, and this causes stimulation of these small finger-like projections called papillae. These will absorb VFAs and are stimulated by the initial VFA production in the baby calf. How do these rumen microbes get into the calf? Well, generally they're found in the environment, usually they're from older heifers and cows. So if the baby calf is exposed to the environment of other animals, she will generally pick up these rumen microbes and establish in the rumen. We will then feed forages to this young calf to develop the musculature of the rumen. Baled hay, long forages, cause this organ to develop a much stronger muscle contraction to allow her to digest and move feed around. It normally takes about four to six weeks from the time the calf is born before the rumen is really functional, which means you'll see the baby calf chewing its cud, eating forages, and start seeing the rumen development and formation of the papillae. In an adult animal, we have the process hall rumination. Rumination is cud chewing, and four basic processes will occur. When there is a tickling around the opening of the rumen, this will cause the animal to regurgitate or pull up a bolus of feed. This bolus of feed then comes back to the animal in its mouth, and she will rechew this. As you'll see in the second bullet item, she will chew at least 30 to 40 times per cud if it is a strong cud and has long particle size. This is very important for proper rumination to occur. While she is rechewing, the third R occurs, resalivation, which means we mix saliva, which contains buffer, in with the feed, which then can be used to buffer the rumen. Once the cow has chewed this fine enough, much like you and I chewing our own feed, she will then re-swallow this bolus of feed back down into the rumen, and the process will start over again. She will spend nearly five to 600 minutes a day chewing time. This is important to have proper rumen fermentation and adequate amounts of saliva being produced in the dairy cow. Once the feed is fine enough and is heavy enough, it will then leave the rumen. That determines when it can move out into the reticulum and other parts of the digestive tract. A second process in the rumen is called eructation. 
which is a nice word for saying belching. Eructation is removal of excess fermentation gases from the ruin. The two most common gases will be methane, that's blamed for the greenhouse effect from time to time, and carbon dioxide. If this cow can... Yeah, so I can say eructation is term used. We call belching. What is This is the way to form methane and carbon dioxide. जो कि बोलते हैं ना ग्रीन गैस हाउस में जो ग्रीन जी में अभी ये ग्रीन हाउस गैस को बढ़ाया था जो कि ये जो विशेषण करके एनुअल तक ये बन और ये इसका प्रोसेस है जब तक ये कंप्लीट नहीं करेगा तब तक फूड है वो डाइज नहीं हो इरुक्टेट दिस गैस अप शी विल देन ब्लो एंड ऑफ कोर्स रिक्वायर्स क्विक मेडिकल अटेंशन रूमन कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स if you and I took a sample from the room and we'd expect the pH to vary from 5.9 to about 6.5, or about factors that cause this shift to occur a bit later. Every 20 to 40 seconds, if we had a stethoscope, we'd expect to hear a rumen contraction. This is normal because it mixes the feed, causes the cow to chew or cut, and also relieves gas. Finally, the rate of passage of feed varies from 6 to 9 percent, depending on its particle size and the type of feed it is. For example, forages are quite slow. Straw would be very slow, where corn grain would be very, very fast, especially if we ground it very fine. If the rate is too fast, we can have abnormal fermentation. If it is too slow, it reduces dry matter intake. We then look at the actual fermentation going on in the room, and we'll have three primary acids. These are called volatile fatty acids, or VFAs. It's obvious if you open up a cow and smell, it has a very pungent and disagreeable odor coming out of the rumen. The major one will be acetic acid or acetate. Either term would be correct. This is a two-carbon volatile fatty acid and is the major one found in the rumen, making up typically 60 to 75 percent of total VFAs and is a major source for energy for the dairy cow and a source of milk fat. The second VFA is propionic acid or propionate. This is a three-carbon VFA, makes up about 50 <laughs> सर वो बीच में जो आधा आधा आधार करके एक फोल्डर खुल गया था सर मेरे मेरे से जी ही है यस सर कोई आधार फोल्डर करके खुला हुआ आ रहा था तो ब्लूटूथ पे करना था अच्छा नहीं नहीं वो अब सही है सर it is a primary source of glucose. Glucose is needed for a number of functions in the cow, including the production of milk, sugar, or lactose. The third major VFA is butyrate, or butyric acid. This is a four-carbon volatile fatty acid, makes up 15% of the total VFA, and is another energy source very similar to acetate or acetic acid. These are the three primary VFAs. There are several other smaller VFAs, which we will not discuss today. Generally, the ratio of rumen acetate to propionate will vary, typically from 2.2 to over 3. Now, why do these VFA changes? Basically, the carbohydrates will change the VFA proportion and pH in the rumen. For example, a high forage diet forages being such things as hay, corn sage, pasture, will have a high level of acetic acid because the bacteria that digest the forages and fiber are predominant. So we'll see 65% acetic acid and perhaps less than 15% propionic acid. However, we shift the cow's diet to a high grain diet, we may find less than 50% acetic acid and over 25% propionic acid. We need to maintain this acetate to propionate above 2.2 as recommended by Wisconsin researchers. When it goes less than that, we may see signs of rumen acidosis. Rumen acidosis, or low pH in the rumen, usually refers to an abnormal fermentation. When the pH goes below 6, evil things can happen, as you'll see. Usually, the time the cow is below a pH 6 and how low below 6 determines how severe the rumen acidosis is. When a cow experiences rumen acidosis, the amount of VFA production goes down and the amount of microbial yield also declines, which means the cow has less fuel and less protein for her utilization. Also, because of the change of pH in the rumen, it can go to the bloodstream and affect blood flow to the feet, which can lead to laminitis or animals that have sore feet. Farmers will also note a decrease in milk yield and a decrease in milk fat. So we have a change both in the amount of milk and the components themselves. The cow's health is also compromised, which may require veterinary service or affect her immune system. 
Another term you'll hear championed by the Wisconsin veterinarians is something called SERA, which stands for subacute rumen acidosis, and is felt to be the major metabolic disorder reported and seen at the University of Wisconsin hospitals for dairy cattle. Let's now leave carbohydrates and go to protein. What happens to protein in the rumen? Basically, three different fractions appear in protein. Soluble protein, also known as SP, rumen degradable protein, and rumen undegradable protein. If we understand what happens in the rumen, these terms make sense. If that protein is broken down very quickly by the bacteria, when it reaches the rumen, we call that soluble protein. It will go two to 300% per hour. It goes very, very quickly. It's a very fast rate and can be beneficial to jumpstart the rumen. However, if it is too fast and too excessive, it ends up going into the bloodstream and has to be excreted as blood urea nitrogen. About 30% of the total protein should be soluble protein to have an adequate amount in the rumen. The other phase would be the rumen degradable protein. This makes up about 65% of the total protein. It also breaks down to ammonia and in some cases to amino acids, which are used by the bacteria. Its rate is much slower relative to soluble protein. If the feed does not break down in the rumen, we call that rumen undegradable protein. About 35% of the feed should be targeted to be rumen undegradable protein because then the cow will digest that just like a hog or a human would digest that protein. This feed is not degraded. ये समझ में आ रही है मतलब रूमिनेंट्स में रूमेन में जो प्रोटीन चेंजेस हो रही है ना वो डिफरेंट टाइप से हो रही है अमोनिया और अमाइनो एसिड्स के साथ कहा डिग्रेड हो रही है कहा नहीं डिग्रेड हो रही है और किस रेशियो में हो रही है जी इसको समझना बहुत जरूरी है तभी मतलब प्रोटीन की रेशियो हाँ बोलो इससे पहले वाले पेज में एक जो था कि मतलब फीट में ब्लड चेंज हो जाता है लीड्स टू लेमिनेटी तो वो मतलब डाइजेशन में फीट में ब्लड का चेंज कैसे हो जाए सर हम ये बोले कि इससे पहले वाले फेज में एक था ना वो कि फीट में ब्लड का चेंज हो जाता है लीड्स टू लेमिनेटी तो लेमिनेटी का डाइजेशन से क्या दिखेगा लेमिनेटी जी सर लेमिनेटी मतलब इन्फ्लामेशन ऑफ इससे वही हम पूछ रहे हैं सर कि मतलब डाइजेशन से लेमिनेटिस का क्या रिलेशन है मतलब क्या इसका डाइजेशन का रोल लेमिनेटिस में क्या है इसके पहले वाले स्लाइड में वो दिखाया था कि मतलब ये सीधा सीधा उनको डिस्क्राइब करता है मतलब कि एनिमल के हेल्थ स्टेटस पे क्योंकि जब तक एनिमल का हेल्थ स्टेटस बिल्कुल नॉर्मल नहीं रहेगा तब तक उसकी मेटाबोलिज्म सही नहीं रहेगी ठीक है No, no. Okay. It goes through pretty much intact. Therefore, the amino acid profile of the rumen undegradable protein does not change. You will notice that the amount of rumen degradable and undegradable always has to add up to 100. Soluble makes up about half of the rumen degradable fraction. Fat changes in the rumen are minor compared to carbohydrates and protein. The triglycerides found as a nutrient are hydrolyzed, which means they are broken down to fatty acids and glycerol. These fatty acids are then hydrogenated, if they are in the rumen long enough, to add hydrogen ions to these fatty acids to make them more saturated and have less effect on fiber digestion. Vitamin changes are also minor in the rumen. The good news is many B vitamins are synthesized by the rumen microbes. B vitamins such as niacin, biotin, thiamine, and others are made in large amounts by the bacteria, which then can be used by not only by the bacteria, but also as a main source of B vitamins for the host animal. However, under some conditions, we will add extra B vitamins due to requirement or other metabolic disorders, especially niacin and biotin. Fat-soluble proteins are really not affected in the rumen. Mineral changes also are very minor. Minerals do not change in the rumen appreciably. They are not absorbed in the rumen, therefore they go down to the lower tract. Some minerals will bind to organic matter, which may affect absorption in the lower tract. Many of the organic minerals, such as zinc methionine, are rumen stable and do not degrade and go down to the lower tract. Finally, we'll talk about intestinal digestion. Some people call that the lower tract. Let's go through each of the nutrients quickly and decide what happens in the intestine. Protein basically is broken down to amino acids. Remember the two sources of these proteins are going to be microbial protein, about 65% of the total, and about 35% from the rumen undegradable proteins are broken down to amino acids and are absorbed across the intestinal lining. 
By and large, the small amount of starch that reaches the small intestine can be broken down to glucose by an enzyme and absorbed as a glucose, much like in a hog or a human. Fats are broken down to fatty acids and then are absorbed as micelles and transported then as triglycerides. Remember we said if there's too much triglyceride, the animal will store it as fat. Minerals are absorbed in the small intestine, either as organically bound or tied to some other source, and vitamins are also absorbed at this point. So you can see the real action item for absorption occurs in the small intestine, very important structure in the digestive tract. Well, this concludes our description of the digestive physiology. Of Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. questions are there? questions are there? What questions are there? What 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 are there? So, what is the same thing? Laminatis Laminatis is inflammation of leg, blood flow of the laminatis. Digestion is blood flow of the laminatis. Language तो समझ में नहीं आता इतना तेज बोलता है स्लाइड ही देख के जो पता चलता है चलता है नहीं नहीं अच्छा इसके बारे में डिस्कस करते हैं थोड़ा सा और एक और है वो स्लाइड देख लो चीजें समझ में आएंगी Greatness on the outside is born from greatness on the inside. What is the greatness happening on the inside of your cows? Have you ever considered the science behind how feed is digested? It's all about the bugs. It all starts with the microbes or bugs inside of the cow's rumen. These microbes include protozoa, bacteria, and fungi. They add up to more than a quadrillion rumen microbes per cow. Now that's a lot of bugs. Each type of microbe plays a critical role. Let's break it down further. Bacteria carry out most of the digestion of sugars, starch, fiber, and protein for the cow. Protozoa swallow and digest bacteria, starch granules, and fiber. And fungi open up plant fibers to make them more easily digestible. It might be hard to digest what these roles actually mean, but it's pretty simple. Cows don't have the enzymes to digest the fiber they eat. So, rumen microbes work together to turn forage into energy and protein that cows can use. These bugs are needed to digest feed and produce volatile fatty acids, or VFAs, which are used by the cow as energy. This energy is used for maintenance, growth, lactation, and reproduction making these tiny bugs a very big deal. But rumen microbes don't thrive on their own. The nutrition you provide cows can help maintain an optimal rumen Hello. Hello. हाँ अब आइए हाँ कंटिन्यू करो कि व्हाट कैन हैपन इन आइडियल एंड लेस देन आइडियल रूमन कंडीशंस इन अ हेल्थी रूमन द स्टमक हैज अ गुड पापुलेशन ऑफ माइक्रोब्स एंड दोस माइक्रोब्स आर एक्टिव माइक्रोब्स परफॉर्म देर बेस्ट व्हेन देर इस अ कंसिस्टेंट सप्लाई ऑफ न्यूट्रिशन व्हिच मेंटेन्स अ कंसिस्टेंट रूमन पीएच when nutrition doesn't supply the nutrients needed for the microbe population to thrive, microbes become less active and less efficient if they function at all. This can happen with abrupt diet changes, inconsistent nutrition, and drops in rumen pH. The bottom line is, what and how you feed your cows affects which microbes grow, how the feed is utilized, and the nutrients available to the cow. 
One way to bridge the gap and provide the nutrients microbes need to flourish is providing your cows with Purina Accuration Supplement, available in block, tub, liquid, and meal forms. It helps provide the consistent nutrition needed to achieve a desirable rumen environment and maintain a consistent body condition score. A consistent body condition score can lead to cows breeding back quickly, optimize conception rates, and calf weaning weights. Next time you think about your herd's nutrition, think from the inside out. It's all about the bugs. Think about feeding rumen microbes, which fuel digestion, nutrient utilization, and ultimately, a productive cow. That's greatness you can see. Purina Accuration with intake modifying technology is one of many proven flexible solutions available through the Purina All Seasons Cattle Nutrition Program. The program covers every life stage and every season. बिल्कुल बेसिक्स बताया क्या पार्ट है क्या है मतलब जो एनिमल है वो तो न्यूट्रिशन भी फीड इनटेक लेती है वो कैसे जाती है रूबेन में फिर रूमेन से कैसे वापस आती है कट के लिए ठीक है फिर वापस में जाती है फिर वहां से आगे बढ़ के जाती है में और ठीक है ये चीज सर सेकंड जो देखे सर रिगर्जिटेशन के बाद वापस सर रेटिकुलम में जाता है या रूमेन में ही आ जाता है फिर देखो ये डिपेंड करता है कि साइज साइज मतलब कितना कटिंग जो होता है ना वो कितना होता है मतलब जब तक एक अप्रोप्रिएट साइज नहीं रहेगा ना तब तक वो रूमेन में ही जाएगा लेकिन जैसे वो अप्रोप्रिएट साइज में आ जाएगा ना तो रूमेन से मतलब वो सेकंड इसमें कंपार्टमेंट में चला जाता है रेटिकुलम में चला जाता है ठीक है अगर वो साइज नहीं होगा मान लो उतना कटिंग नहीं हो पाया उतना ब्रेक डाउन नहीं हुआ मतलब टूटा नहीं तो वो वापस चले जाएगा रूमेन में ठीक है क्लियर है ये चीज रूमेन में दोबारा कुछ नहीं जाएगा रूमेन में तभी जाएगा जब वो क्लियर है नहीं तो वो सीधा पास करता है रेटिकुलम सर तो ये रेटिकुलम रेटिकुलम का सर रेटिकुलम का डायरेक्ट कनेक्शन वैसे फेगस से है क्या सर नहीं नहीं रूमेन के थ्रू ही है इसमें दिखाया जो क्या तुम मतलब समझ नहीं पाए थोड़ा सा दूसरा जब आएगा तो रूमेन होकर के जाएगा ना सर रेटिकुलम में रुके जाएगा लेकिन वहाँ रुकेगा नहीं वो सीधा पास कर जाएगा रेटिकुलम इससे पहले भी क्लास में बताया था ना आवाज नहीं आ रही सर आवाज आ रही है यस yes, सर आवाज क्लियर है देखो फूड पार्टिकल्स जब तक उतना ना ब्रेक डाउन हो जाए जब तक कि वो आगे पास करे रूमेन क्या है जस्ट कलेक्शन बैग है वो जो भी एनिमल इनटेक लेती है उसको वो वहां पर कलेक्ट करता है ठीक है उसके बाद फर्दर फिर रीचुंग जिसको बोलते हैं ना रिगर्जिटेशन वापस भेजता है और फिर से रिसोलोइंग होता है yes, तो वो होता है क्यों है प्रोटीराइटिक बैक्टीरिया सेल्यूलाइटिक बैक्टीरिया जो है पहले उसका रूमेन में उस फीड के साथ मतलब एक्शन होता है पार्शियल फर्मेंट करता है फर्मेंटेशन के थ्रू ब्रेक डाउन करता है उसके बाद वापस फिर मुंह पे भेजता है रीचुइंग के लिए ठीक है रीचुइंग होती है फिर रिसोलोइंग yes. तो जब वो और छोटा हो जाता है ना फूड पार्टिकल्स देन वो जाता है रेटिकुलम में जाता है रूमेन के थ्रू लेकिन रूमेन में उसका कोई काम नहीं हुआ क्योंकि वो उतना मतलब ब्रेकडाउन हो जाता है डिग्रेडेशन हो जाता है कि वो सीधा रेटिकुलम में पास कर जाता है फिर रेटिकुलम के बाद ओमेजम में गया yes, तो में काम किया ओमेजम में भेजा और वहां आपकी रेटिकुलम में गया ऐसा और ओमेजम में क्या होगा वहां कौन सा फर्मेंटेशन होता है कहा एबोमेजम में कौन सा होता है एबोमेजम में एबो एबोमेजम एबोमेजम दैट इज आल्सो नोन एज एबोमेजम तो एंजाइमेटिक होता है एंजाइम एबोमेजम में एंजाइमेटिक रिएक्शन होता है उसके बाद वहां से निकल गया वो चले गए इंटेस्टाइन में अपना फिर जहां एसिमिलेशन जितनी होनी है वो एसिमिलेशन होते हुए स्मॉल इंटेस्टाइन में जो बीच वाला वीडियो देखा उससे क्या समझ में आई कि बेसिक्स जो फूड इनटेक टूटते हैं फूड ग्रेडिएंट्स जो टूट रहे हैं ब्रेक डाउन हो रहे हैं 
तो वो डिग्रेड हो रहे हैं तो किस किस फॉर्म में निकल रहा है yes, जो बेसिक था मेरा तीन तरह के होते हैं ना वोलाटाइल फैटी एसिटिक एसिड बुटेरिक एसिड और प्रोपेनिक एसिड तो एसिड और प्रोपेनिक एसिड का बहुत बड़ा प्रोपेनिक एसिड बहुत ज्यादा रोल है अब ये देख रहा होगा तुमने अभी कि प्रोटीन के केस में कुछ और है फैट के केस में कुछ और है ना जो रेशियो दोनों का होना चाहिए वो बिल्कुल अलग अलग है और वो डिस्क्रिमिनेट करती है कि किस टाइप का फूड इंग्रेडिएंट है और उस पर किस टाइप के बैक्टीरिया को एड करना है तो जो सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट है डेट इज दू पॉइंट टू मतलब एसिटिक एसिड का जो रेशियो होना चाहिए वो टू होनी चाहिए वन में प्रोपेनिक एसिड के एक मतलब एक प्रोपेनिक एसिड होगा और टू पॉइंट टू ब्यूटेरिक एसिड होगी इवन वोलेटाइल फैटी एसिड जो है इस रूप में आता है फिर देखा तुमने कि दो है ना एक हेग अलग था और दूसरा अलग है मतलब जो फाइबर कंटेंट है उसका अलग है प्रोटीन कंटेंट का अलग है मतलब उसमें एसिटिक एसिड प्रोपेनिक एसिड का रेशियो ज्यादा था मतलब जो डिफरेंस था वो ज्यादा था लेकिन दूसरा जो फैट वाला था उसमें बहुत ज्यादा नहीं था ठीक है तो ये सारा डिपेंड करता है और मतलब आगे प्रमोट करता है कि हाँ वोलेटाइल फैटी एसिड इतना बन रहा है फिर फर्दर जो उसका कंपोनेंट्स बना जैसे एक देखो विटामिन बी है विटामिन बी जो भी है वो चले जाता है होस्ट के प्रोडक्शन में मतलब होस्ट ही उसको यूटिलाइज कर लेता है या इवन ये कहो कि बैक्टीरिया जो है वो खुद जो है खुद है वो यूटिलाइज करता है अपने एनर्जी सोर्स के लिए चलिए इसके भी नींद खुल गई आखिर नहीं तो ये चीजें हैं चलो ठीक है आज की क्लास अभी बस मतलब देखो कहने का सेंस ये है ना कि इसको बहुत ज्यादा